Tonight, we're at the wonderful English Institute of Sport in my adopted hometown of Sheffield. And the topic is athletics. And we're going to be looking at the science behind the medals to give the audience a bit of an idea of the kind of things you can do to make someone run faster. Set. Running is perceived, I suppose, as one of the purest of sports and there's not really a lot of science behind it. So the science um, links to the coaching, the technique and the injury prevention behind the athlete. So we might be looking at physiology, we might be looking at coaching technique, some kind of interventions to make them run faster and really take measurements of the body and see what interventions actually work. I came into the sport late at 18 yeah, I never thought I'd be an athlete, just had, you know, plimsolls. Started chasing Chris Akabusi and Todd Bennett up a hill, and it was hard. And I did really well very quickly, won the Commonwealth title, the European title. I was a talent that put them in a training environment that will run fast, and then I broke my foot. And from that moment onwards, it was an uphill struggle. So the advice I would give somebody now, absolutely, in my situation, is stop, let's get you looked at physically. Now that exists now. It didn't exist back in the mid-80s. Here's something we did and something that would work for running, Roger. So this is a sensor that you stick in your shoe. You can stick these in and all they're going to do in four points on, the, on each foot, they're just going to measure the pressure you're applying as you sprint. The red line is the heel. And this is the middle of a sprint contact. So now we can see that what I'm doing is I'm hitting with my heel first. That's me breaking. And you can catch athletes doing this either before they finish their run or during their run, which is usually a sign of some kind of injury. Rehab is such a problem for athletes. Our technology can spot when you're full back up to your, your 100% and when you should really go at it and avoid getting re-injure yourself in exactly the same way, which is what probably 80% of athletes out there end up doing at some point in their careers. This is Luke South. We're going to do some tests on him now. So we've got this thing here, which is going to measure his oxygen intake uh, and is the expelled air. Uh, so we'll, we'll look at that as he runs around the track. We've got something around his leg here as well, which is actually measuring the oxygen levels inside his leg. You might just be able to see down here on his feet, you can see a little light here. This is one of those sensors that Rob was just talking about. Well, I'm a biochemist and I look at um, proteins in the body that are involved with oxygen. And the beauty of that is that they change colour when oxygen binds or is released. And the classic protein is called haemoglobin, it's the protein in red blood cells. You pick up, it picks up oxygen in the lungs, delivers it to the tissue. And as that protein delivers the oxygen, it changes its colour. It goes from a bright red, say a Sheffield United colour, to a claret colour, say an Aston Villa colour. And we can therefore tell, just by shining a specific coloured light into the muscle or into the brain, how much oxygen is in, the, is in that tissue. Set. Go! So he's going to get out, which he has done, and he wants to get into his running as quickly as possible and then start to relax. What we can see here is we can see the change of oxygen uptake of the athlete as he runs round. Come on, Luke, pick it up. So now he's about halfway there. So now he's going to pick it up. He's going to listen to you. And now he's starting to move. We can also see the oxygen levels in his actual muscles in his legs. And we can even look at left leg, right leg, because we've got a sensor on each. Oh, well done. Good man. Good man. Good running. Because it doesn't matter how you run the 400 metres, it will always hurt at about 300 metres and it's always the last 100 metres when it really hits you. Well, long term we're hoping that we can get a full biomechanical analysis of anyone running or jumping. Uh, short term we have to live with smaller metrics, things like contact times as they're running. We look at uh, all of the timing events that we can when the body is moving. And we'll just build up from that, hopefully getting things like how you hit the ground, not just how long you hit the ground for, whether you pronate, whether you supinate, whether you do various things that might cause injuries. Uh, and slowly but surely, we're hopefully going to get up to a full skeletal model so we know exactly all the biomechanics of how you move. But of course, the big debate is, as the technology advances, do the athletes get softer? And I think the smart ones are the ones that, that recognise that technology is there to make that little difference. 
not to make the big difference. But as we all know at the Olympic Games, it's the little difference that will be the difference between whether you medal or not. <laughs>